Hello friends, Subtract him here and welcome to the first episode of The Educated Exile where I try to get as much knowledge in your head as possible, create a reference so you can always go back to it and feel like you have a full comprehensive concept of the way that a skill works, how you can deal with it, how you can seek out even more knowledge without following any sort of rigid build template. And this way you can customize a build yourself, create a build that you want to from scratch, have the tools to go out and research how other people are doing those tools and create your own style of what you would like to do and how you would like to play the game built, built around what, uh, what the focus of, of this video is. For the first episode, I decided to go with a little bit of a classic. Uh, I get a lot of requests for, hey, do you have a recommendation for a toxic rain guide? And there's a lot of guides out there that are specific build guides and they're fine but I want to kind of take a more comprehensive high level approach. There are many different flavors of toxic rain and you can really, it's, it's such a versatile skill. You can build so many different ways around it. And I just want to show you guys many of the different things that go into making the build and how you can scale it and customize it yourself. Anyone who is interested in toxic rain can just watch this video, put their own build together basically from scratch and have fun playing the game without even thinking about it. So let's get educated. To start off, obviously we need to have some gameplay. So I'm gonna show you guys a tier 12, pretty rippy, corrupted uh, red map. Now, the way that I built this build is, I've kind of been leaning on this style for a long time. In fact, here, let's even hit a delirium here. Uh, I have fewer, I would say I have few, fewer than 10 exalts invested into this build right now. And it's, uh, the only downside is that it's a little squishy and to scale my damage higher, I am gonna have to start to invest into a much more expensive bow. With that said, the, the build is very nice and smooth. I have killed Cirrus on this build. In fact, I killed Cirrus with a much, much more stealth version of this build. Now you'll see that it takes a little bit of time for the damage to ramp. Find the boss here. You'll see a lot of variations on how people do this build, and that's the really cool thing about it, is Toxic Rain is incredibly flexible, and you can just put it together however you like. I've experimented it's with a lot, lot of different day. versions of this. I have done totems, I have done actually mass mirage archers, I have done all sorts of fun stuff. In fact, let's, uh, people also really don't like it when you skip the league mechanic, so let's just do that really quick. I don't know, just do that. All right, there you go. So, a very rippy tier 12 with pretty basic gear, less than 10 exalts, uh, level 89, build is solid. And now that we saw the fun stuff, let's go to the overview. So what is good about Toxic Rain and why do people play it so much? Well, it's just an incredible league starter. You can start with Caustic Arrow at level one. You can grab Toxic Rain when available for your class. Ranger can get it also in act one. Other classes have to wait until Act 3. You just combine Caustic Arrow with Toxic Rain, and you can keep that combination from Act 3 all the way until Act 10, changing almost no gems whatsoever. You can just smoothly go forward and, and level. In fact, it is my favorite way to level in the game, period. I like it more than Hollow Palm. I like it more than anything else. It's great mid-league mid for all the content in the game. You can just self-craft all of your gear very, very easily. You can just throw it into Harvest Reforged Chaos or Aberrant Fossils, 
and make and that's actually how i made all of my gear this league so far and i have done tier 16 maps unlocked most of my atlas and have killed cirrus already with it um it's a generally safe and easy play style it hinders all of the monsters uh you can even combine it temp chains which will make the monsters basically not move at all it ignores proximity shields it can do every single map mod there's no reflect or anything you can get leech or life and mana on hit so you can even run cannot regenerate and then it is very very flexible you can really do it with any single any class on the right side of the tree and in fact i've kind of considered playing it with a slayer there's a lot of mtx and, and customization you can do to make it look really really pretty and yeah that's really the the high level with it and if you choose to invest even more into it you can take it to the next level if you put if you put 30 to 50 exalts into it you can do pretty much all the content in the game and in fact if you play like a tank a super tanky trickster or raider version you can even kind of delve a little deep with it uh you know you do have to you do have to worry about the damage scaling but yeah it, it can do crazy amounts of content in the game uh however what are the downsides so it is uncomfortable waiting for the damage to ramp. You may have noticed in my, my little gameplay demo there that when I was fighting the boss, the, the damage kind of, it starts slow. And then as the, as the toxic rain starts stacking on top of itself, then the damage will ramp to pretty, very high levels. Actually, you can get to tens of millions of DPS with toxic rain. After the changes in the last patch, mana costs are a little dicey. And especially because of as an ass chant triggering costing mana, you have to do a couple more things than you had to in the past to deal with mana, but it is entirely solvable. It's a very popular build. So if you're not self-crafting your stuff and you're just trying to buy items, it can be very in demand and pricey early, but the crafting is very, very easily. I'll show you guys how to do that in this video. So don't even worry about it. If, when you want the big boy items, I would still go for crafting them. If you haven't watched this video, you may have difficulty knowing how to scale the damage. I've had a couple reports from folks on my stream that they watched some other guides and they said, hey, well, I took it to like yellow maps and now I don't know what to do. I'm very confused. So hopefully we're answering this question. That's a, a big goal of this video. Very important question that may not get answered all the time is what is toxic rain? Very, very important thing in Path of Exile are tags. Tags are that gray text that you see at the top of the gem description. It's an attack area of effect, chaos, duration, projectile, and bow. So it's a bow attack. All of those tags are very, very important. And that <laughs> the fact that there's that many tags is part of what makes Toxic Rain so strong because it means we can link many, many different things. The downside of that is it does make it a little confusing knowing how to scale it. There's, there's actually two parts of Toxic Rain. And as far as I know, every single build out there focuses on one part and they kind of ignore the other part which makes sense. I, I don't know if anyone would ever do an on hit version of toxic rain, but the general way that people think about it is so toxic rain, you shoot it up in the air, it falls down. And when those arrows fall down, they will actually do a hit on the monsters that they land on. And then they will put a pot on the ground. And as the pot is there, they will do damage over time and hinder the monsters near it. And the, and the more pods that are stacked on top of each other, the more damage that you're doing. So what you're trying to do is get as many pods in an area as possible to get a overlapping damage over time. There, there is that hit portion of it. And it's important to remember that you do hit with toxic rain a lot because it hits so many times, you will actually be hit critting once in a while. And that's important to know if you want to put on say tailwind elusive onslaught boots, you can actually get advantage of tailwind and elusive by critting so much, but we generally ignore the, the fizz to chaos and the hitting a portion of it. And we really just focus on the fact that we do chaos damage over time. There's a certain amount of duration for the pods and we want to stack those pods as much as possible. And then area of effect comes into play. So the size of the pod is affected by the area of effect, but also the spread of the pods is affected. And the idea is to get your damage as high as possible. You want the pods to overlap as much as you can. And so by spreading out the arrows, you'll get very good coverage on the screen but your single target damage will go down. So we actually don't want to scale area of effect too much. Previously, the arrows did not change the location that they landed in based on your area of effect. It just made the size of the pod bigger. So conch effect was arguably not very good for toxic rain. But now after the changes, you just want to do conch effect and get those, get it as close as possible and just get all that damage stacking all over the place.
stack as many pods as possible and make those pods do as much damage. So generally, you're going to start off looking for damage, chaos damage, and damage over time. Those are just straight increases. You know, you do 10 damage, you have 100% increased damage, chaos damage, damage over time. You know, multiply that by two, right? After you reach a certain threshold of your damage increases, you know, 20% damage here, 50% increased chaos damage there, those will kind of have diminishing returns after a certain point. You're going to be looking to focus on your damage over time multiplier. That is effectively kind of like a crit multiplier for damage over time, and they're additive, so they're very, very easy to scale. Uh, you're going to look for those in your, on your passive tree initially, and then on your gear and in cluster jewels. These two things go together very, very closely. So on top of that, you can scale that with attack speed and duration. Attack speed is gets you can get more pods out there more quickly, and duration is how long those pods stay there. If you can attack quickly enough, and your pods last long enough, you can stack many, many, many pods, and that's how you can get to crazy amounts of damage. Oh, most important for leveling chaos skills is gem levels. This is another reason why these chaos skills are so good in Expedition League and probably, and continuing further on, is after nerfing all of the support damage gems, we actually are scaling our damage primarily focused on our gem levels. That's where our base chaos damage comes from, and that hasn't been changed. So instead of relying entirely on scaling with very, very strong Awakened Gems or anything else that you know may have been hit by the nerfs, we still have our base gem levels that none of those mods have been hit. So you want to focus on getting your gem levels as high as possible. That is your number one way that you're going to be scaling that base damage that you're going to be doing that all of the other modifiers are going to scale off of. Why, why should you play Toxic Rain? Well, you want to. It's, anything you want to play in this game, if it looks fun to you, just play it. Don't, don't let someone else tell you to play something. To me, the, the main reason is it's been around for years. It's tried and true. It, it has barely changed. I played it in the solo self on Hardcore Delve Race as a trickster, as a league starter. I've played it as a league ender. It's just reliable and really, really good. It's really just like a no fuss, I know that this is going to work type of build. And especially with the number, the amount of changes that GGG is putting out there, you know, we do have to roll with the punches a little bit. There are some tweaks that we wanted to make in 3.14, basically just dealing with the mana issues. And honestly, I think Toxic Rain is an even better place after all the nerfs than even than before, which, uh, well, <laughs> maybe goes against what GGG was going for with all the nerfs. But uh, I find I find TR is just in an absolutely incredible place. All right, well, that was the academic version of looking at what Toxic Rain is. Let's look at what it is in practice. So when I attack with a bow, you'll see it puts all of these pods on the ground. You'll see that I have five pods because that's how, much, how many projectiles I have. And each pod will sit there and it will do damage in about this area. Every single pod that is overlapping, so we're see you see that we have pretty good overlap there. That might be about four pods at a time that are doing damage. Let's put me over there. So each pod is doing 31,000 damage per second just paper damage that's not actually how much damage we're doing there's probably some other scalers going on with cursing and all of that each pod lasts 2.6 seconds that is very very important and we're able to attack every 0.43 seconds those are the numbers that we look for you can ignore the first two lines those that's the on hit damage that just we don't care those are very very low numbers all we're trying to do is attack as quickly as possible and get as many pods on the screen and you'll see each one each pod that is sitting there is doing overlapping damage and so as, as we're able to ramp up our damage and have that many pods, so if, you know, let's, that looks like maybe we have about 8 to 10 pods right there, that is actually 31,000 times 8 to 10. That is pretty solid damage for not taking into account our curses or our auras or anything. As we get more attack speed, as we scale our chaos damage over time, uh, those numbers can get very, very, very high. This is on less than a 10 exalt budget that I am able to clear all of the content in the game. That's really the core idea of how Toxic Rain itself works. The very cool thing about Toxic Rain is due to its wide array of tags and the way that it's scaling, we can combine it in so many different ways. So as you saw uh, in the gameplay demonstration, I'm using an Asnas chant. What I have that linked to is a Divergent Soul Rend with Void Manip, Great GMP, and Efficacy. This means that every single time that I attack, I am shooting a bunch of cats, because <laughs> that's the MTX that I have, 
And each one of those uh, cats itself is doing 49,000 chaos damage per second, and it lasts 1.6 seconds. That is very, very cool, very good for clear, and that makes the fact that Toxic Rain itself is kind of just landing this one area. This is more of our single target or for killing rares, and the cats are going out there and they're clearing everything on the map. Now, you'll, still pe you'll see people doing a lot of variations where they put in Essence Drain and Contagion, or a thing that I do once in a while, but I think it's not too necessary, is I actually put in Ball Lightning, and I have that tied up with a Watcher's Eye, that gives me life gain on hit while affected by vitality. That means that every single time a cat or ball lightning hits, and ball lightning is hitting constantly as it's moving through the monsters, it's giving me a ton of life gain on hit, and it just, my hit points, I'm just getting hundreds of life every single second. Very good for sustainability, but I prefer to make, uh, to use efficacy and just make Soul Run do as much damage as possible. Uh, the Essence Strain Contagion combo is like, it's okay, but I really think just pure Soul Run is better. I have experimented with all of these things a lot, and the the fact that you, you're shooting one alternating spell, you know, you're going to shoot Essence Drain and then Contagion, or uh, Contagion and then Essence Drain, you're kind of just waiting for both of those to hit one mob. If something kills that monster before both spells can hit it, you're not going to get that ED Contagion combo. And I really just think it's inferior, uh, whereas Solrend is going to be going through all of the monsters and clearing very, very cleanly as well as every single time one of those cats hits a monster, you're getting that life gain on hit from the Watcher's Eye. That's how I've built the character anyway. Another clear variation that you can do is using Caustic Arrow. Now, I have it currently linked with Arrow Nova, which is very, very nice I'm for just running around, yet. shooting a single Caustic Arrow, and it will clear the entire screen. You also will link it to Mirage Archer, so a Mirage Archer is going to be doing those attacks as well. Now. It's going to be doing a little bit, it's not going to be doing insane single target, but it will clear the entire screen very, very nicely. And this is a wonderful way to literally destroy an entire screen from a single, a single cast. I used this variation for a while, this version of this character, until I got my Aznas chant, but I do prefer the Soul Rend version uh, later on. Another variation is using Ballista Totems. This is a great way to safely get a lot of single target damage. You can just drop your Ballista Totems and keep on running. And then when you get to a single target that you want to do a lot of damage, you can drop Ballista Totems and self-cast even more Toxic Rain to overlap an absolutely absurd number of pods. So those are some high-level templates for what you can do for putting the build together. And in fact, I have a friend who's using a Herophant to really focus on making the totems crazy, and he's ripping through the game very, very easily. He's doing all the content and bossing very, very well with an even lower budget than I have. That's kind of the appeal of Toxic Rain, is once you know the basics of all the tags that go into it, the ways that you can scale the damage, you really have the, the fundamental knowledge for just seeking out the ways that you wanna scale it and, and push the damage higher. So the fundamental knowledge that you need to know how to scale Toxic Rain is just thinking about those tags that it has and th that basic idea that I was talking about with attack speed, duration, chaos damage, chaos over damage over time multiplier, and thinking about your area of effect, Make actually making sure that you don't get too much AoE so the pods are close enough to each other that you're getting a lot of overlap. I built this tree, this this patch, from entirely scratch. I, did, I haven't even opened POB yet, this, this league because I've played this build so many times and I know what goes into it that POB is actually just not necessary. And that's like the cool thing about Toxic Rain is especially once you know the, what, it, the, the only weird thing, right? Is like knowing the cluster jewels and then maybe knowing like Watcher's Eyes and th things you have to buy with that. But where you path your tree is actually very deterministic based on what you're trying to scale. So what I do is I just type like, if I'm just making a new character and I'm and I know I'm gonna go toxic rain, I don't have a plan. I just go, hey, chaos damage. Where do I want to go? Okay, so I scale up to chaos damage. Okay, there's some up there. Then I look. Oh, there's a lot of chaos damage up there. Cool. All right. Now I type over time. All right. There's damage over time here. There's damage over time here. Damage over time here. Now I type uh, duration. I see that there's duration here, there's duration here, and there's duration up here. All right, cool. And then I type attack speed. I can get some attack speed there, I can get attack speed here. I even level a duelist as Caustic Arrow, 
and toxic rain. And I'll go to these exact same points, Hunter's Gambit, all the way up to Atrophy, Growth and Decay, Exceptional Performance, and Avatar the Hunt. You grab these guys, any class that can do it, like you could probably even make it work with a Witch. Yeah, a Witch wouldn't even be able to path that um, too difficult. That is the beauty of it, is you can just get that Chaos damage over time, get that duration, get that attack speed up, walk around shooting your bow and you can you can at least, you can get through the axe with any character in the game that you... and then as a demonstration to show how strong it is i leveled a character up to level 15 and just picked up the gear that she found here well i put on some wanderlust so i could move a little bit quicker but this is all gear that i found as i was just leveling i have a three link toxic rain ballista totem and a three link caustic arrow with void manip and uh, mirage archer and all you have to do is shoot a single arrow and your Mirage Archer will do the rest of the work. So a single arrow, Mirage Archer, and then you just dash forward. I'm not up to that just yet. And and uh, and level your character. So yeah, this is basically the ex the entire experience of leveling your character, especially if you're leveling a ranger. You can do this from act one until act 10 with very little changes. You just put in more gems as you get more links. You look for more attack speed, you look for more damage over time, and you just keep on going. This is, this is it. You shoot a single Caustic Arrow and you keep running. If you see a harder pack or a harder rare, just drop a couple totems, get some of that Toxic Rain down, keep on going. And then for leveling and bossing, same same old thing. Just drop your, drop your totems, keep a single Caustic Arrow debuff on them, and walk around very, very safely. I also like to use Puncture. It makes them bleed, and since we're scaling damage over time, it actually scales with all of the other stuff that we're that we're doing. And the single target becomes absolutely trivial. I am just using self-found gear here, absolutely nothing, nothing twink. And uh, very, very low effort. The entire it really trivializes the entire leveling experience. <laughs> I'm not that uh, I do not like leveling any other way. Just walking around, keeping the debuffs on them. Not even thinking about it. I actually found a Vol Blight in a Vol side area as I was leveling this character, but I decided to... I'm not going to use it. <laughs> it. It actually is a really, really nice find, which makes them take even more Chaos damage. Keep the Puncture on them. Keep the Totems down. Just like that. Your love for a man. And that, that is That's the entire leveling experience. Avail. Literally nothing changes from Act 1 until Act 10. You just put in more damage gems, more utility gems as you get them. And that's it. And if you want to twink this character, it's as easy as just tossing in a you know, gold rim. You can use Worms Molt early, especially because you get that leech quality. Uh, a Quill Rain will take you all the way to early red maps. It's crazy best in slot because of that attack speed. And all we care about is stacking those pods. It's actually bonkers good for, for Toxic Rain. And then you can just use something like a Hero's Bite for a lot of stats. And actually, flat damage to attacks will be very nice for getting some on-hit damage early. But we aren't going to be scaling that later on. You know, toss in a Kurui Ward, and then a couple whatever unique rings. Later on, you can put on Thief's Torment or, or, whatever, or Dream Fragments, whatever feels good for you there. How to level Toxic Rain, that is literally just it. Uh, the way that I put together the passive tree is I typed in Chaos Damage. And I made a beeline for Method to the Madness. And then, then I grabbed Ballistic Mastery going to Aspect of the Eagle, which is just crazy good. And then all you do is you see the glowy things. Like, I, you, don't, you, <laughs> you, you don't need someone to hold your hand. Like, literally, I have Chaos Damage typed in here. Boom, Chaos Damage. This says Chaos Damage over time for Poison. Do watch out for that. We are not poisoning. Don't go for anything that says Poison. But we see Chaos Damage. We see Chaos Damage. Ah, there it says poison. All right, we got the we got the big chaos damage stuff there. We get Hunter's Gambit, Fangs of the Viper, Atrophy. Nice. Now we say over time. Boom, growth and decay, damage over time. Avatar Hunt, damage over time. And that's really it. 
Uh, you, you know, in addition to that, you can do things like go for Master Fletcher, gives you damage over time, attack speed, damage over time with both skills. That is nice to grab if you want to. There's a lot of pathing to get over there, but that is it. Um, and then, so it doesn't matter if you start as a duelist, a ranger, or a shadow, even a witch. You can just get to these nodes that say damage over time. You will scale Toxic Rain and Caustic Arrow. You just level like that. There is nothing more to it. <laughs> it's not that complicated. And then later on, you know, when you want to optimize your tree, open up path of building, figure out how your pathing might have been wrong, but don't even sweat it early. Just zoom straight to those chaos damage over time things, and you will be able to get to maps. There, you, you don't need any other hand holding or anything. I, I believe in you. <laughs> now for the gear, as a bow build, obviously the most important thing that we want to start off looking at is the bow itself. So, funny enough, the nicest thing, because attack speed is so important for us, Quill Rain is just, it is basically best in slot until like late yellow, early red maps. You can use a Quill Rain from very early on, from level 5 until level 85. <laughs> it's really, really good because it attacks three times a second, and everything that we care about is stacking the pods. We can just sit there with a Toxic Rain in our Quill Rain and attack like light speed. Like absolute light speed, right? Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> Look at all the cats, right? A Quill Rain is, is bonkers good. Uh, and in fact, I'm not sure that my single target is much higher with my bow than with the Quill Rain. Like, yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> anyway, so you start off with the Quill Rain and this will, the single target is so good because you're scaling all of those overlapping pods. You're going to start falling off because that 30% less damage modifier on there, your damage will start falling off in early red maps and it'll, it'll be a little uncomfortable. After that, it's very, very easy to just craft, craft a bow to get you to the next level. So you want a six link bow base early league. You can just buy six porcupines for three to four chaos each. Then you want to take a single double resonator with corroded and metallic fossils and you will in you have a 50 percent chance to hit plus one level of socketed bow gems and plus one level of socketed gems so you're on average going to spend 15 chaos on top of the uh what 24 chaos that you spent on the porcupine cards and create a bow base that has plus one level of socket gems and plus one level of socketed bow gems then you craft chaos damage over time multiplier from your, your bench, and you, you have a bow that will take you into late red maps. Are only able to hit plus one level of socketed bow gems on a item level 50, which is the, what the porcupine is. And if you want to level up from that one, you can look for a eye level 64 thicket bow that is six linked already. You can probably find it fairly cheap for maybe 50 chaos or, or less if you get kind of lucky. People will be putting them up on the market. This will cost just a little bit more, but with on average three tries for an average of 35 chaos, you can do corroded, faceted, and metallic in a triple resonator and hit it with the plus two level of socketed bow gems. Then on top of that, you craft your chaos damage over time multiplier again, and boom, you have a bow. This, this is a very, very cheap bow. And in fact, I'm not even on the wrong bow base. This was just an available six link bow that we were able to toss a couple fossils on top of. And this bow has killed Cirrus. I clear tier 16 maps. I've killed all of the Shaper Guardians. With this bow, it is good enough. And it's like a 70 to 80 chaos bow. Pretty, pretty nice scaling into that. Carcass Jack is just generally best in slot. The increased area effect, which is then countered by the con concentrated effect, isn't a problem. And then the increased area damage is just really, really nice increased damage. It's hard to beat a carcass check on, uh, for this build. Then for your amulet, you just want plus one level of chaos skill gems and chaos damage over time multiplier. I crafted all of my jewelry, or I crafted, I crafted almost all of my gear just with harvest reforged chaos and aberrant fossils. So you want to look for hunter bases and then just take aberrant fossils, solo L aberrant fossils. They're only going to be one or two chaos each. Throw them at your gear until you hit the important mods, and then you're good to go. So we're looking for level of chaos skill gems and dexterity gems, if we can get it, in addition to chaos damage over time multiplier. So for this amulet, I threw, I was a little unlucky, but I threw about 20 aberrant fossils at it. The base was like five chaos. So let's say I spent 30 chaos on this amulet. 
Same thing with the, the Quiver. I think the Quiver was actually one chaos. Then I think I hit this on my first Aberrant Fossil. So this is like a two to three chaos Quiver. The reason why we're using Aberrant Fossils is because Aberrant Fossils and Reforged Chaos is the modifiers that we're looking for have the chaos tag. That just means that it's more likely. And in fact, in the case of Harvest, it is guaranteed that you're going to hit a chaos modifier. So we just are going for that chaos damage over time multiplier. On the ring, it does not have a cast tag. It has a caster tag. So we throw that into Harvest Reforge Caster. You have a very high chance of hitting the Despair on hit. I think I hit this like my first or second Reforge. Good enough. <laughs> Crafted life on it. Good to go. And then similarly with my gloves, I think I used a couple Aberrant Fossils. So all of this gear, and then these are just these are just stat stat items on top of that. Yeah, these are just regular stat items, very, very cheap, that I bought for just a couple chaos each. In terms of all of this gear, right, we're looking at like, this is like 80 chaos, 90, 100, 110, 120, and then these these things I think I just like found, found or crafted, right? So that we're looking at like 120 to 150 chaos total for, for all of this gear right here, right? The carcass check was like five chaos, just incredible clearing T16 maps. Uh, the Azanas chant was an exalt. So that's, you know, another 100 chaos. That is most of it. It is not necessary. It is a huge quality of life. It is how I like to play this build because it makes clearing so much better. But as I showed before, you can just use a, another hunter base that you throw aberrant fossils at until you get nearby enemies have minus nine chaos res. And in fact, I probably do a little bit more single target damage by doing this configuration with the Ballista Totem addition uh, instead of doing the Azanas chant. But this just makes clearing better. This just makes clearing more comfortable because I'm shooting all my soul runs out. And then if you want to upgrade to something super GG, you can get a bow like this. <laughs> this guy this guy is like the top top damage guy every league. I don't I don't know what he's doing, but I saw him as an Ellie hit raider last league. Effectively best in slot <laughs> if you want to craft a really big bow. Uh, so it's a synthesized bow base that has plus one socket of support gems. He's using plus one socket of gems. He's got all of the damage over time multiplier. He's got the attack speed and he's got crafted plus two socket of support gems. So that means that his empower is actually, uh, what level four, five, six, seven, eight, level eight empower. So plus seven to, <laughs> to his toxic rain. So his toxic rain is uh, 28 plus uh, plus one, so plus 29. So he has a level 29 toxic rain in here. <laughs> so that is why it is best in slot. He is doing absolutely bonkers damage. If you want to scale it to just making, and this is saying, this is saying 11 million damage over time. That is probably just for a couple pods. I bet you he's in at least like 20, 30 million DPS. And because of that, he is able to just do everything in the game. And like this guy has, this is a bow that's, you know, who knows, 100 exalts or more. And he is still using a carcass jack, right? And an as an S chant. You, these, these items can just carry you through the whole game. Obviously, he's got a crazy double corrupted one. But he even is just using despair curse effect instead of the uh, toxic rain enchants, which in, in fact, I think is probably better. Uh, plus one arrow on toxic rain is not as good as people think it is due to the way you know, getting more arrows is really nice, and sometimes it does give you more overlap. But at a certain number of arrows, the arrows will start landing further and further away. And so you're not actually stacking arrows in a single area, and you want to scale other damage. So Despair Curse Effect is just a straight linear more damage multiplier. So he is probably doing the right move here. And if you just look at his gear, he's just scaling chaos damage over time. You know, th th this is, if you want to look at the big, the big gear, so what I'm doing with this character is... I got it to where I want it to do. I'm level 89. I've killed Cirrus. My Atlas is decently unlocked. I am happy with my progress. And now I'm going to start a new character and use the fat, use how far I got and the currency that I have farmed to fund a new character. And th that's the way that I look at Toxic Rain is it's a really good league starter. You can do what this guy did and take it all the way to the end game, get really, really crazy stuff. I have done that. It's very strong. There's nothing wrong with doing this. It's a wonderful build. But what I like to do is use this just to get my league kicked off, farm a lot of currency, and then move to move on to something else. So this is mid-tier gear. It, the POB that I will have in the description will have the character as it stands right now. This is how I like to build the character as a league starter. And this is mid-tier gear. I have, uh, as I showed, this is 
All of this gear is about two to three exalts max. Uh, I do have a Watcher's Eye that is uh, <laughs> is worth quite a bit. I think I got a ridiculous steal. I bought this for, I think, three exalts, three or four exalts. Uh, it is worth more than that. But this is just an absolute luxury. Uh, so ignoring the Watcher's Eye, the rest of this gear is just two to three exalts, absolute maximum. Um, the, the Cluster Jewels, I crafted myself. I just took Chaos Damage and Chaos Damage over time. Cluster Jewels, I threw them into Harvest Reforged Chaos until I hit pretty good mods. As I said before, all we care about is skill effect duration, chaos damage, and attack speed. So we're honestly, literally, I think very close to every single chaos damage notable that you can get on these jewels is usable for you. Throw them in there, everything except for things that say specifically poison. Throw them in to your Harvest Reforge Chaos. When you hit a couple things that look pretty good, like these are not perfect for me, you're good to go. And I'm just, I'm happy with that. I'm doing enough damage. I'm scaling my character. So that is it for all of the items that can be purchased and consumed. If you want to see like what the GG gear is, go to poe.ninja. Go to Raider is the most popular, but you don't have to specifically do Raider. You can just type in Toxic Rain, select that, sort by DPS. Don't look at just the top guys. See, there is some variation. So open up a few different tabs, but you know, th this is a really good way to see what your build can turn into. Later on, I like to take Toxic Rain just to like late red maps and then transition to something else. For the passive tree, there is some customization that you can do, but there's really just a couple core ways that people put it together. It's, it's literally just how many cluster jewels do you want and how much are you willing to invest in that? So as I said before, you can just type chaos damage, damage over time, and that's the nodes that you're gonna go for while you're leveling. So we wanna go from method to the madness, hunter's gambit, get up to growth and decay and atrophy, grabbing life nodes as we as we go along. Then we like to go down to thick skin and wind dancer. This is just really nice for making us much tankier. And especially in today's day and age, chance to avoid elemental ailments is invaluable with all of the flask nerfs. After that, I like to grab avatar of the hunt, makes us faster, even more damage. And then you want to grab a very large thread of hope which lets you get potency of will, and then you grab exceptional performance along the way there. That is what makes our toxic rain last 2.6 seconds per pod right now, and that's a gigantic scaler on our damage. I probably would even consider grabbing these two nodes, but ideally, I if I want to scale this character the, to the next level, as we see, you know, continuing to look at Ultima Online, <laughs> uh, the next the next way to level this character up would be to drop these nodes up here. Now, these are very, very good nodes. These do give us some good damage, but they're kind of low value, right? So like all of these runners here are just kind of like plus three chaos damage over time multiplier, 10% increase, not very big. Atrophy is the biggest one here with a 10, but you know, cast speed, this is kind of stuff that we don't care about. Uh, similarly, growth and decay is just kind of increased damage over time. There's diminishing returns, right, uh, with increased damage. So we have a lot of runners here, right? Like this is a lot of travel just to get not that much damage, whereas the cluster jewel slots are giving a skill effect duration, 30% chaos damage over time per node, right? These are these are just way, way higher value. So the way to level this up to the, to the next uh, level would be drop all of these nodes and do another chaos damage cluster jewel setup down here. And that's really just like the, the new age, <laughs> the new age. The original way that TR was always built like a year ago before Delirium, was you know grab grab these nodes right just grab these same exact nodes and then you're done and then people would go to like some more leech and some more life stuff like that we got cluster jewels so people drop some life <laughs> uh grab all the cluster jewel stuff and then when you want to level to the next you want to go all the way to the end you get as many cluster jewels as possible that is just the way path of exile works after delirium more cluster jewels more good build and because it's such a, a core open template that we're able to be flexible. I've done a few things with how I built this character. I just want to show an example. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be prescriptive in how you should build this. Like I really want to show you guys things that you can take if you want to experiment. And I think this is part of why I think Expedition is such a cool patch. The idea of good game design is having flexibility and especially in a role-playing game is being able to choose the things that you find interesting. So what I've chosen to build around this, this patch uh, to deal with the mana issues, you know, because we then things cost more mana, and especially every time Asnas chant triggers now, it chunks my mana, right? So what I chose to go into 
is instead of grabbing things like Heart of Oak or just going through um, through herbalism here and pathing the traditional way, I grabbed uh, Primal Spirit and Juridic Right. The long term, if I stuck with this character longer, would even be to go into Crystal Skin so that I could get over 100% avoidance of all elements. Now, also, my flash charges are incredibly strong. I have a ton of mana from when I use my flask. So if I pop my Enduring Mana Flask, look at my look at my mana sustaining like very, very nicely. And in fact, I have uh, mana on hit on the jewel as well. So I have zero mana issues as long as my Enduring Mana Flask is going, which is very, very cool. Other ways of dealing with mana issues are getting the non-channeling skills have minus mana cost. And in fact, this guy found one that was based off of an Elrion Elrion ring, so he has minus twelve there. In addition, use that with the Replica Conqueror's efficiency, so he has minus twenty one to his non channeling skills, and that's just very very huge. And in fact, Replica Conqueror's efficiency, because it has skill effect duration as well, is pretty much best in slot for a Toxic Rain build. All right, so obviously that's not everything there can be said about Toxic Rain, but I don't want this to be a <laughs> one of my two hour videos. You know, we have a lot of like specific builds that are out there and specific build templates, but we also have a lot of duplicated stuff, especially when it comes to Toxic Rain. You know, besides Cluster Jewels coming out and people finding new classes that it can work with, it really hasn't changed in years now. It's th This is very similar to the build that I played two years ago on my Trickster. You know, the only difference is I'm on a Raider now, really, and I have Cluster Jewels. This is the same basic template, and I just want to get that general knowledge out there where you know the, the top-level stuff that you're looking for for scaling the build. You have the tools for looking on PoE Ninja and exploring what other people are doing, as well as combining it with your own unique ideas. Like, I think Toxic Rain Slayer, it's, it, it's entirely possible that it won't be the best. <laughs> um, I don't think it would be the best, but I think it's actually very viable entirely because the duelist starts so close to where the ranger starts he can go straight to avatar the hunt and then get up to method to the madness and that is good enough probably to get to red maps as a duelist and that's how strong toxic rain is ggg tried to nerf it i'm glad that the nerf was kind of a failure <laughs> to be to be honest all it did is it made conk effect a no-brainer and the skill is still totally fine <laughs> like they, they really didn't hurt a single thing about it besides the, the hinder Thanks for watching the first episode of The Educated Exile. I hope I got everything out there that I needed to. I really want people to be able to watch this video, put their own Toxic Rain build together, and just have fun playing the game from beginning to end. So let me know in the comments below how your experience with TR is, what else you would like to see, other ideas that you may have with it, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. I would like to give a special shout out to my patrons, Tricky Nick, Amarius, Bifrost50, Mark Hahn, Nathan L, Rentner, The Wrong Thing, William Lee, Aaron White, Colin, Day R, Expertidious, Gazer1990, Michael Rack, Mr. Doubleina, Nikolai, Six Link Andrew, and Whoop. If you'd like to get your name in the credits of my videos and some other cool things, head over to patreon.com slash subtractum. Thank you.